You are welcome to my channel. Thanks for visiting. Thanks for remembering to subscribe if you haven't. And if you are subscribed to my channel, I appreciate the fact that you are visiting again. Thanks for sharing all my presentations. Today, the focus will be on how to make diagnosis of heart failure using BNP or anti-pro-BNP and also in someone already taking Entresto. I tag this as diagnosis one because this is not going to go through everything we can do to make the diagnosis of heart failure. That will be diagnosis two. There yeah, we'll be going through the ECO, the laboratory investigations, ruling out possible causes of heart failure, and so on. So, BNP is all about brain natriuretic peptide, diagnosis one of heart failure. If someone is wondering, why will you single out BNP, anti pro BNP, and Tresto in making the diagnosis of heart failure and determining the risk and you know, predict the prognosis? The answer is simple. BNPs are helpful you know, in predicting ventricular arrhythmia, including ventricular fibrillation and sudden death that is associated with heart failure. Now, the diagnosis of heart failure will start from thorough history. And you can check my video on heart failure A to Z and limit yourself to symptoms when it comes to the history. Then we will do thorough physical examination. You can also check my video on signs of heart failure to help when you are looking for what to get when it comes to heart failure on physical examination. After we've done thorough history and physical examination, we can clinically make the diagnosis of heart failure. But for accuracy purposes and for medical legal reasons, we might embark on certain investigations, laboratory, radiological. Today, one of those is BMP anti-pro-BMP, and also someone taking Entresto. BMP stroke anti-pro-BMP. This will be helpful in risk classification of heart failure patients. Also in determination of admission and determination of discharge. BMP or anti-pro-BMP or both will be strong predictor of death in heart failure. BMP will have shorter half lifespan when compared to N-terminal pro-BMP. The half life of BMP is four hours, while that of anti-pro-BMP is 72 hours. BMP is initially in the brain. We can also get it from the heart chambers, particularly the ventricles and blood vessels. It is expected to increase in heart failure and left ventricular dysfunction. AMP is atrial natriuretic peptide from the name as suggested, atria, the right and left atria. Sometimes from ventricular hypertrophy and it's also expected to increase in heart failure and left ventricular dysfunction. The function of BNP or ANP is diuretic in nature. Both of them would do that. The natriuretic, that is sodium excretion in urine, will be another factor. And with that, when you excrete sodium, water retention is reduced and blood pressure would drop. BMP is expected to protect the heart against progressive failure. Brain natriuretic peptide is hormone released from the ventricles. The value will increase with age normally. Let me explain this. The older we become, the higher the value of BNP. That is what is expected. The values are higher in women. So, 
other men, other women, the values are expected to be high in them. And when you match the two, the same age group, is expected to be higher in women than the men. NT pro BNP is N terminal pro hormone BNP. Both BNP and NT pro BNP are released in response to changes in our chambers. That is why when there is atrial fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation, or heart failure, then the value will change. Now, let's go through this together. BMP in heart failure is expected to be greater than 400 picogram per milliliter. Anti-pro-BMP in heart failure is variable depending on the age. In anyone less than 50 years, if you peak anti-pro-BMP of 450 picogram per ml or greater, that is a failure. In anyone 60 to 70 years old, anti pro BNP 900 PG per ml or greater is diagnostic. In anyone greater than 75 years old, anti pro BNP must be 1800 PG per ml or greater. Now, let's follow this critically again. If BNP is between 100 to 400 PG per ml, you will be careful to say this is heart failure because you will not be able to make a definitive diagnosis of heart failure using that. You will need more tests to be able to say that this is heart failure if BNP is between 100 to 400. But if BNP is less than 100 PG per ml, you can say that this is definitely not heart failure, no heart failure here, if BMP is less than 100 PG. If NT pro BMP is below 300 PG per ml, then you can say this is not heart failure. BMP alone now, higher values can give a likely clue to heart failure. But that doesn't rule out other associated conditions that can cause dyspnea. It might be pneumonia, might be pulmonary embolism, and so on. While on treatment, the value of BNP or anti pro BNP should be dropping. But reverse might be the case, the opposite might be the case sometimes. Higher values is likely going to be the case in renal failure, in pulmonary embolism, or pulmonary abstention. So it depends on associated conditions. Even the person is having heart failure already on good treatment, and the value is not dropping, please look out for you know, some of these other issues. Check the renal system, the pulmonary system, and so on. This near due to car pulmonary, that is, lung disease causing right heart failure will give us value that will be high, hmm? though it is not left heart failure. BMP are lower in obese individuals or people with overweight, but anti pro BMP are not affected in, you know, I mean, under these circumstances. So, in someone obese or overweight, if you are not comfortable with what you are getting as per BMP because it's likely going to be lower compared to what is expected, then do anti pro BMP that will not be affected by the weight. Higher, I mean, BMP is higher in the phase of sepsis. So, someone is having septicemic shock and you are taking the value of BNP, you are gonna get higher values because of sepsis. Now, BNP and Entresto, why are you so concerned about this? Here, when someone is already on Entresto, you have to use anti-pro-BNP values to judge 
the level or the severity of the heart failure in such patients. Why that? Because Entresto contains two medications, and one of them is Sacubitri. Sacubitri is a nephrolysine inhibitor. And what would that lead to? It will not affect NT pro BMP value. Sacubitri will cause inhibition of BMP destruction. Then we have higher value or increased values of BMP. Though the person is on medication, right? But there'll be no uh, safety or protection for BMP. BMP will not be destroyed. So the value of BMP will remain up there but it's not going to affect the value of NT pro BNP. So it is noteworthy that we should consider above uh, points that I've put down here. If someone is already taking Entresto, then if my patient is taking Entresto, I'll go for the value of NT pro BNP. So I can answer that of BNP. I won't use that to judge. Okay, I would rather go for the value of NT pro BMP. Now, BMP values are iron in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction compared to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So, if you have your left ventricular ejection fraction uh, no, determined and it is low or pretty low, something like 35% up to 45%, then expect the value of BMP to be very high. But if it is with preserved ejection fraction, the value might not be so high when you compare the two you know, conditions. If you desire to determine the efficacy of heart failure treatment, then don't measure BMP anti pro BMP once, rather have you know, serial measurement. So, a single measurement is not appropriate to make the determination of how well you are doing when someone is already on treatment of heart failure using BMP or anti pro BMP to make that determination. Go for serial measurement, not single measurement. Heart failure with symptoms. It's not a guarantee that BMP or anti pro BMP must be high. Okay, some may have no symptoms and still have higher values, particularly if they are young, if they are stable and they don't have ischemia and they don't have cardiomyopathy. Now, uses of BMP in heart failure, in cardiomyopathy, in atrial fibrillation and core pulmonary, now problem in the lungs leading to right heart failure. Anthracycline chemotherapy in pulmonary embolism, in pneumonia or pulmonary hypertension. So the value of BNP that is confusing some when it comes to heart failure might be you know, related to any of this. Also, a left ventricular dysfunction in renal failure. In interest to it will be high because there will be inhibition of destruction of BMP, though anti pro BMP's value will not be affected by interest to no ingestion. Consider the age, the higher we are, the higher the value of BMP. I mean, in age, the older we become. Okay? Consider the gender, morning women. Now, man, consider the body mass index. BMP is going to be lower in obese and overweight. anti pro BNP will not. So why interpreting the values? We should have all those at the back of our mind. With that, I've come to the end of this short presentation as per the use of BNP, anti pro BNP, to determine whether we are dealing with heart failure, determine the severity of heart failure, determine the probability of death or not, in, in short, the prognosis, the, the way to classify the heart failure and you know, 
determine how long we are going to treat this patient for or whether we are winning or not. But another thing that I have added to this today is the history of the use of Entresto is pretty important. Thanks for listening. Remember to share this and come back and check my channel again for diagnosis too. And that will be fully uh, incorporated into heart failure A to Z. There you are still going to find this very presentation diagnosis one. I appreciate your time. Now you can leave your comments. Thank you.